This is Digital View. Now, 12-year-old Kira Corley is the living, breathing answer to Silicon Valley's recruitment problems. She's an accomplished coder, a skill the industry badly needs, and she faces a bright future in a tech sector still populated by too many men. She's just won a scholarship from Apple, and earlier this week I spoke to her from her home in New York, and I started by asking her about what it takes to be a good coder. I mainly, um, math is like my best subject in school, but you don't necessarily have to be that good at math. It does use math, but it uses a lot more logic. Tell me about your Chess Moves app. What does it do? Well, I have a chess class at school, and a lot of the kids were like forgetting how the different pieces move. So I thought like a short game that they could play on their phones and it would take like 30 seconds maybe. It would help them to remember the moves better. So that's where the idea came from. So you would just play a short game and you would move the pieces around the board and try to get to a certain spot, which is useful, which is a useful skill for when you're playing chess. So what's your advice to other young developers? You got to get the whole idea together of what the game you want it to be and what you want it to do. And then you got to draw out the screens on paper. And then once you do that, you got to put the screens into the app. And then once you've got all the screens, then you write the code to make the screens actually do something. And you met Tim Cook at an Apple coding convention. Well, I thought that was just an amazing experience. Like that whole week was just unreal. Cause um, first of all, I got to actually meet Tim Cook, which is really amazing. And then in all week, there were tons of developers there and designers that were amazing at what at what they do. So I was able to get lots of help from them and learn a lot that I wouldn't have been able to get anywhere else. Clearly a good start. Will you keep on coding? Yeah, I'm definitely going to stay with developing and coding. I'm probably going to get into artificial intelligence too with uh, making robots and stuff. Tell me, what do your friends think of all this? Oh, all my friends, they're, they're just amazed and they're like, wow, Kira, you're amazing. Things like that. They all think it's really cool. Well, joining me now from North London is Emma Mulqueeny, founder of Festival of Code, which aims to introduce young people in the UK to the intricacies of coding. Uh, Emma, thanks for being with us. When we say young people, it has been predominantly young men, hasn't it, up to now? But is that now changing? Um, yeah, it is changing, but it's, it's changing because we're making an, an effort to welcome girls, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's gone, certainly in the Festival of Code, it's gone from 2% to 30% over seven years. So we're happy. Still a way to go. What, is it, what can you do to sell the idea to young people as a whole, and in particular young girls? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, we need boys and girls in this industry. It's not, it's not just a, a single gender problem. But, um, but I think I, you can attract girls by just making it mainstream, by just making sure that everything that you do is fun, is relevant. It's not just something that you go and sit and do in your bedroom. You know, you, you can actually do things with the apps that you play with every day, or you can make a game that is just for you and your friends. You can come to places like this in Ticketmaster and you can build things that perhaps help then make buying tickets for festivals easier. Now tell me about the, the building blocks you need. Uh, traditionally, if you're a good mathematician, you probably had the logic skills to go into coding. But is that necessarily the case? Not at all anymore. I mean, it does depend on what kind of coding you want to do. But just for kind of general app building, really, you just need to be able to have the logic flow. So be able to say, I want this to happen and then that. And then you copy and paste, really, it is as simple as that. There are so many tools that you can use and you just run them together. It's really simple. There's been lots of efforts, haven't there, to try and improve coding, code clubs and things like that. And now the national curriculum is going to change. But are we 
improving the coding literacy of youngsters fast enough? I don't think we can ever <laughs> improve fast enough. I mean, the digital world is moving so quickly at the moment that there's no way we're going to be able to keep up. But I think that we can't rely on just schools and traditional methods. What we have to do is kind of embrace all of the things that are happening around the world so that children can go and take these opportunities. So, for example, like the festival that we're running this summer, it's free, anybody can come, and it happens around the UK, but also outside as well. And there are lots of things like this going on. So kind of, I would say, look for the opportunities, let children engage, see if they enjoy it. If they enjoy it, let them do it more. If they don't, let them go and do something else. What happens at your Festival of Code around the country, then? Uh, they kind of go into centres like this one and they build apps, websites or um, write algorithms from Monday to Friday and then at the end of the week we all come together for a big weekend festival show and tell where we do heats and then we do semi-finals and then a big final on Sunday where we find the best coding child aged 18 or under and um, we have lots of fun. There's tons of stuff going on. There's music, there's uh, photo booths, there's graffiti walls, there's not just sitting programming. There's lots of good <laughs> things going on. But yes, everybody's welcome. We've still got a few spaces. <laughs> All right, you've done the good sales pitch. Thank you. Emma Mulqueeny, who's founder of Festival of Code. Uh, <laughs> have a look out for Festival of Code near you. Thanks for joining us today. And thank you for your input to Digital View today. We asked you if you thought it was ever going to be possible for an entire country to survive without a traditional cash form of money and by a narrow margin 50 margin i should say 55 percent to 45 percent uh, you the digital view viewers have decided yes we could just do it if we wanted to so thank you for that input uh, do get in touch with us if you'd like to suggest a topic for our program or have some comments for us you'll find us on twitter at sky digital view